the research data whether the criterion or the dependent variable multiple discriminant analysis more than one discriminant function can be computed so there is also a possibility that will discriminate between categories of dependent variable in a perfect manner whether the dependent variable has two categories this is used under the two group discriminant analysis so there are two ways good morning and welcome to the session four in unit five in business research methods where we are going to speak about discriminant analysis now let me just move further to make you understand what is this discriminant analysis now this is a technique that we are going to use by a researcher in order to analyze the research data whether the criterion or the dependent variable is categorical or the predictor or the independent variable is interval in nature. Please try to understand the entire phenomenon here is more about understanding the situation. So when we talk about the discriminant analysis, this is actually used to discriminate, find out exactly whether this particular variable that we have taken is a dependent on the category or a predictor or an independent variable what is that variable all about so this is not going to be something where we are just going to take the analysis just like that and go with it but rather we are going to understand it we are going to build with it and then move further the next thing is that the term categorical variable means that the dependent variable is divided into number of categories. Now, for example, we have taken the computer scale category A, category B and C. So similarly, computer A, computer B and computer C can be categorized as the dependent variable factor so we are trying to categorize the data then we will try to cat analyze the entire factor of how whether the variable is dependent or an independent factor this kind of analysis is used in research these days to find out how many factors are dependent or independent now when you talk about business research these days for every consumer, there are a lot of factors which he believes as a dependency factor or an independent factor altogether. So when a person tries to analyze the entire activity, for him, he needs to understand that whether a factor is dependent only on color, size or the outlook or exterior. There are so many factors that comes into picture. So we have to understand which is dependent and which is independent. So tomorrow, let's say that you're going to launch an automobile. Now, when moment you launch an automobile in the market, a four wheeler, what is the dependent variable for a consumer to purchase? And what is the independent variable through which he will make a decision of buying it or not buying it? So what is coming into factor here is that there are lot of dependent and independent variables which go across the entire sector to understand and to analyze now moving further the objective of a determinant analysis is to develop discriminant functions that are nothing but the linear combination of independent variables that will discriminate between categories of dependent variable in a perfect manner so that word is very very important here the objective of the discriminant analysis because when we talk about the discriminant analysis itself they are all a linear combination factor so you know when we talk about that linear combination factor of how things have happened what are all the factors that are trying to categorize that are trying to build up that entire analysis the variable in a perfect manner that has to be understood clearly here 
Why? Because when we talk about this linear combination, are they all fitting on the straight line? Or are they dependent somewhere else? Is the movement of the variable projected towards some other corner? Similarly, it enables the researcher to examine whether the significant differences exist among the groups in terms of predictor variables or it also evaluates the accuracy of the classification. So whether there is any difference, any kind of variation that is existing among the groups of the predictor variable. Now for example, let's look into the SUV market in India. There are many types of SUV. You talk about a compact SUV, you talk about an enlarged SUV, you talk about an SUV at the top end, at the mid range and so many other segments altogether. But all of these SUVs, when you put it into one group and you try to make a factorial analysis, you may try to make a discriminant analysis there, you will try to receive or you will try to get analysis or ideas which are entirely out of the box. They are completely different. They are not the same at any given point of time. Reason is quite simple. Why? Because there are some differences which will exist. Some might be on the price, some might be on the variation, technology and so many things. So that's where it is enabling the researcher to examine whether significant differences exist in that same group when we are doing that particular analysis factor. It also evaluates the accuracy of the classification. So there is some accuracy factor. So if there is an accuracy factor, then this classification comes into picture. Discriminant analysis is described by the number of categories that is possessed by the dependent variable. So what is that dependent variable? It has to be there. It has to be a factor altogether. So it determined by the number of categories that is, you know, dependent variable, what are the factors that are involved in that. So that matters a lot that completely comes into picture in terms of analyzing whether it is dependent or independent in nature. Followed by as in statistics, everything is assumed up to until infinity. So in this case, whether the dependent variable has two categories, this is used under the two group discriminant analysis. So there are two ways of analyzing the factor here. It might be on one side where we are trying to understand one particular variation on, on the other side, the different type of variation. If the dependent variable has got three or more categories, we are going to use this word called as multiple discriminant analysis. Why? There are different variations altogether. Multiple factors are playing here in terms of the analysis role. So definitely this is going to be a different segment, a different ideology altogether. Now, the major distinction to the two types of discriminant analysis is that for a two group, it is possible to derive one discriminant function, only one. So we are not going to have different discriminant formulas, only one discriminant function. On the other hand, in the case of multiple discriminant analysis, more than one discriminant function can be computed. So there is also a possibility that you will be able to compute at different levels at different sectors altogether. Now with this factor we also need to analyze that for any given segment, for any given value, for any given uh, methodology altogether, there can be hundreds and thousands of variations that we can keep showing, which is going to matter a lot, which is going to depend a lot. So this variation factor will definitely help in terms of rebuilding the entire situation altogether. Now, the next thing is that there are many examples that can explain when discrimination analysis fits. It can be used to know whether heavy, medium or light uses of soft drinks are different in terms of consumption of frozen foods. Now, let me look at this combination. One side I'm talking about soft drinks, one time I'm talking about the frozen foods altogether. What is the connection? What is the variation factor, the link factor that one has to understand in terms of the connectivity? So is 
Are both of them related? Are both of them on the same page? What is the connectivity that we are talking about? So in the field of psychology, it can be used to differentiate the price sensitive, the non-price sensitive. Since we have taken about the price factor, let me also try to bring you psychologically the movement of prices of different products. When we look into an Apple iPhone and when we try to compare that versus a normal mobile phone, psychologically your mind has accepted this factor that Apple has got a bigger brand and a bigger tag price altogether. So when you are moving towards in terms of buying an Apple iPhone, you are not going to look into the tag again and again. You're not going to talk about discounts and bargain because psychologically it is not something which is sensitive to the price factor. It is sensitive in terms of the consumer appreciation. So people who are going to spend money of about 70,000, 80,000, 1 lakh and about to buy an iPhone, they know that that is the price they have to pay in order to acquire that brand. So in other case, if it is going to be some other brand, what people try to do is that they get into the price sensitivity issue, they try to bargain, they try to find alternatives. So this is a psychological dimension that starts coming into the discriminant analysis, which will be used in terms of analyzing, in terms of finding out the attributes of the customer processing store loyalty and customer who does not have the store loyalty. So that is very, very important here. That's why people will all always try to understand the price discriminatory factor. We try to analyze, we try to move further, we try to understand how it works. We try to believe at some point of time that being a part of this analysis, we have to understand the various dimensions that are involved, which is closely connecting a product to a customer. So that's where discriminant analysis matters a lot in terms of the research function. Now, moving further, the steps involved, the problem is formulated before conducting it. The discriminatory function coefficients are estimated, definitely yes. The next step is to determine the significance of this. One must interpret the results that are obtained. Finally, we will also talk about the last and the most important step, that is to assess the validity. Now just look here, the problem is first formulated. So the problem is first structured enough to bring into a particular position and say this is what we are going to do. Next, the discriminant function coefficient, what are the coefficients that are a part of this entire exercise followed by you will see the significance are they really significant are they really worth enough in terms of getting to a match there one must interpret the results obtained so you need to interpret you need to find out whether the results are matching whether the results are glowing now the last and the most important step is to assess the validity what is that validity factor that matters a lot why because you this result that is going to come out has to be true, has to be 100% accepted. So validity is a very, very important step that proves that yes, it is genuine, it is truth in terms of bringing out the research function. With that, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that this session was of a great help and resource to all of you. In the upcoming sessions, I would be talking more about the analysis factor from different aspects in terms of business research. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.